the past must address its present. An obelisk, comprised of a square tapering shaft and a pyramidion of 60 degrees at its top. Monolithic, excavated, made from one solid stone, granite. The Greeks called them obeliscos, but the ancient Egyptian named them tekken, taken from the verb meaning to pierce. They were guarantors of a pharaoh's existence in the afterlife, piercing the sky, connecting the earth to the realm of the sun god, immortal, imposing, larger than life. When we were kings and queens, we had slaves. And then the Romans came. It's common knowledge that Rome now has more erect obelisk than anywhere else, including Egypt, homeland of the obelisk. These were carved in one long horizontal piece from the bedrock of a quarry. This obelisk too was made on site, not quarried, but excavated from the ground, Roman dirt, Roman soil. Dirt is in the foundation of our buildings, the very infrastructure that surrounds us. Its use is everywhere, dating back to prehistory, cob, adobe, rammed earth. And here, a material that effortlessly links our past with the present. Remember me, whispers the dust. Most cardboard boxes are reincarnated as containers for goods to be shipped. Some escape this karma to serve a more urgent function as a temporary shelter, a shield, a cot. The Egyptians were the original recyclers. Kings in their hubris demanded their previous signatures of power be chiseled away, removed, off with the name of the old pharaoh, on with the new. Reworked obelisk, Sphinxes claimed as their own. The Romans witnessed this and copied it too. This hollow shell is not really an obelisk by definition, but what of the weight of emptiness? Its total weight dispersed along its body is probably close to my own. The cardboard, the dirt, similar in color, similar to me in hue. Even the dirt keeps breathing a small breath. What happens to a monument whose very meaning is derived by its stature, static, impervious, eternal and timeless, when compromised and surrendered. How will it be defined in a new location? What will it mean when it gets here from there? What has been left behind? What legacy is lost? Obelisk mined near the banks of the Nile traveled downriver to locations where they stood for millennia. Then they crossed the Mediterranean to the shores of Roman emperors as trophies of war. Forced movements, trade routes, power follows trade. This pillage, slaves, obelisk, sundials, exotica, destined to be paraded in Roman triumphs. Years later, 
Special ships will be outfitted to carry obelisks across the Atlantic to the New World, but not before the onslaught of European ships steered again by greed and conquest outfitted to carry millions. Nowhere else is the disorientation, violence, and alienation of contemporary capitalism more manifest. Water is an element which remembers the dead. How were these massive objects made portable? The stone dragged from the quarry to a dry dock on the Nile awaited the season when the waters would rise, allowing the next leg of the journey downriver. Sojourner Truth said, when I left the house of bondage, I left everything behind. I wanted to keep nothing of Egypt on me, and so I went to the Lord and asked him to give me a new name, planted somewhere new, reborn. How fitting that New York, the Empire State, has one of three genuine Egyptian obelisks, all misnamed Cleopatra's Needle though they predate her reign by a thousand years. We think of her beauty, but not of her slaves. Slavery begins with civilization. There are two Egypts for us. Egypt, the land of Hebrew bondage. Egypt, the black land a magnificent African civilization, the realm of powerful rulers. Which of the two Africas is in African American, in African Caribbean? Which Africa is ours? We still don't know everything about how they did it, transitioning that obelisk from the horizontal to the vertical. It's believed that as many as 50,000 men were needed to pull and drag these monuments. Every part of an obelisk journey was designed to be spectacular. In ancient Egypt, there was the original Philadelphia, which means brotherly love in Greek. The first World's Fair took place in our Philadelphia in 1876. The entrance to the Egyptian court was flanked by two towers, which mimic the obelisk traditionally positioned in front of the Pharaoh's temple to Sun Ra. They were inscribed the oldest people of the world sends his morning greetings to the youngest nation. A monument made, a monument dismantled, dissected, mended, put back together, a talisman, a spectacle, a form recreated from an ancient black culture resituated in Philadelphia, a black city. 
And now, at least temporarily, this fragile obelisk sits in close proximity to its kin, the Sphinx of Ramses II, the largest in the Western Hemisphere. It is widely displaced, a stranger in a strange land. The past does not exist independently from the present. Indeed, the past is only past because there is a present. Just as I can point to something over there only because I am here, but nothing is inherently over there or here. The past, or more accurately, pastness, is a position.